Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm in my, in my home studio uh, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master on a daily basis. I want to thank you for joining me today as we continue the theme. We began last, well, no, we began yesterday on uh, the secrets of a champion. God has called us to be champions, champs and not chumps, champs and not chumps. When you were born again, you were born to win. Amen. God wants to maximize you for his glory. God wants you to be fruitful. We use the word productive. The Bible uses the word fruitful, that you will bear much fruit. When you abide in Christ, you're supposed to be productive and fruitful. Amen. Champions. In fact, Jesus is called a champion. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, we are told this. B, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion. My God, we know he's Lord. We know he's king of kings. We know he's Lord of lords. We, we know that he is our mediator. All these words and terms we use to describe who Jesus is in our life. But the Bible says that Jesus is the champion and God is calling for us to be champions, to be winners. Now, today I want to talk about an important secret of a champion, and that is conceptualization. What you conceive. Jesse Jackson used to say that whatever your mind can conceive and your heart can believe, your hands can achieve. But he starts off with the word conceive, an idea, conceptualization. And champions see it before they see it in order to see it. They see it before they see it in order to see it. Perhaps you've heard of Spud Webb. Spud Webb, who was five foot seven, won the dunk contest no, against Dominique Wilkins, one of the greatest leapers back in the 90s, one of the greatest leapers of all times. Dominique Wilkins was six foot seven. Spud Webb would ask, how were you able to dunk the ball and win the championship? And this is what Spud Webb said. Spud Webb said, in my mind, I conceived of, in my mind, the dunk and how I was going to dunk the ball before I took off, before I started running towards the basket and started leaping in the air. He said, I got it in my mind. And that's once I got the idea in my mind, I then put my body in the idea. That's conceptualization. Getting in your mind what God is calling for you to be, what God is calling for you to do, and then by faith, putting your body in the idea, in the conceptualization. Now, what is conceptualization? Another word for conceptualization is what are you dreaming of? If you're not dreaming, I guarantee you, you're drifting. You either drift or you dream. You dream or you drift. Now, what is conceptualization? This is what it is. It's conceptualization is looking beyond what is present in order to look to what is possible. You see what's present in your life. Quit looking at what's present and start looking at what is possible. Now, usually when you tell people to quit looking um, at what's present and look to what's possible, they'll give you all types of excuse and they'll say, well, this happened to me or no one will help me. Listen, usually when they talk that way, they're talking about something that went wrong in their past. You're not going to live in the past. You're not even going to really live in the present because your present is constantly moving in the future. Right. So. All you have left, all you have left is your future. And the question you need to ask yourself is, what am I going to do with my future? We spend 99.9% .9 belly aching about the past. What are you going to do with the time you have remaining? Well, I don't know about you, but I want to be a champion. I want to dream. I want to dream about a better preferable future. Now, when you talk about a dream, dreams are usually one of three things. Here's, here's the three things that a dream is. Number one, a dream is the thoughts and images you have while you are asleep. 
And I believe that while we're asleep, our God works through our subconscious and we start thinking things. I, when I go to sleep at night, I always have next to my bed uh, on my little nightstand, a pen and a notepad because I'm, I, I can get some thoughts in a dream and God speaks to me and I'll wake up and I'll forget it. So I, I have a notepad and a pen next to me so I can write them down. Thoughts and images that God gives you while you are asleep. That's what a dream is. But here's the second thing a dream is. A dream is a the desires, ambitions you have while you are awake. And of the two, the desires and ambitions you have while you are awake are more powerful than the thoughts and images you have while you are awake asleep. So while you're awake, while you're conscious, sometimes it results in people, the results of people putting a thought in your mind, or you see something or hear something that triggers something in you. That's what a dream is. It's desires. It's ambition. Ambition is so important. And then four, thirdly, thirdly, this is what a dream is. The goals and plans God created you to fulfill. Of the three, Thoughts and images you have while you're asleep, the desire and ambitions you have while you're awake, the goals and plans God created you to fulfill. The last one is most important. The goals and plans God has created you to fulfill. And God has some goals and God has some plans that God wants you to fulfill. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 says this. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for your good, not for disaster to give you a future. Notice I said you have to live in the future. What are you going to dream about for the rest of your life? What, do you, what is your life goals, your plans to give you a future and a hope? And hope has to do with, with, with my acrostic for hope is H-O-P-E having only positive expectations. Amen. Your conceptualization, your dreams, your visions, the looking beyond what's what's present to see what is possible. Now, very quickly, let me tell you something about the dreams that God gives you. Because the goals and plans God created for you to feel, you need to know something about those goals and plans and those dreams that you're conceptualizing that God has planned for you to fulfill. And here, here's, here's what you need to know. And that is, please get this, that God's dream for your life, listen to me, God's dream for your life is always bigger than your dream for your life. I don't care what you're dreaming about. God is dreaming even something bigger for you. Wow. Wow. In fact, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 says this. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us. In other words, God's not going to make you do it. He's not going to push you around, but he's going to work within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. In other words, God is putting something in you and is saying, you know what? If you just step out I can, I'm in faith, I can do more than your wildest dreams could ever imagine. So you need to conceptualize a big dream, but always know that God's dream for you is bigger than your dream for yourself. And then put this down. Remember this. Get this. That when, when, when you follow God's dream, listen to me, God always arranges all of the circumstances. In other words, when you dream big dreams, you're going to be thinking, well, how am I going to do it? How's it going to come to pass? Who's going to help me? You dream the dream. God is responsible for arranging the, oh, hallelujah, I could shout on that. God is there arranging the circumstances to help you make that dream come to pass. God will raise up folk for you. God will open up doors for you. God will make a way for you. People don't have to like you in order for you to be blessed. You ought to be shouting and hollering right now. Thank you, Jesus. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you follow God's dream, God will arrange all of the circumstances. You don't have to beg folk. You don't have to kiss up the folk. God will arrange the circumstances. God will prepare a table before you in the very presence of your enemies. Now, how do I know that God will arrange the circumstances and open up the doors? Because that's what the word says. Revelation chapter three 
Amen. Verse 8 says this, I know all things you do, and I have opened a door for you that no one can shut. You have little strength. In other words, you don't have any connections. Yet you've obeyed my word. You did what I told you, what I told you to do, and did not deny me. And I'm going to make that dream. I'm going to open up the door for you. I don't know about you, but I can't tell you how many times uh, that God has arranged some circumstances in my life as the president of an HBCU, as the pastor of a church. I can't tell you how many times God has opened up doors for me. We get ready, to, um, my, my good friends, Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore are getting ready to have this um, summit for ADOS. It's, it's gonna be an incredible summit. But I think about Yvette and all of the people who try to sabotage the things that my sister Yvette Carnell is doing in terms of the fight for reparations. But then I look and see how God, in spite of what folk have done, have arranged open doors that nobody can shut in order for her to get this message out about reparations for the American descendants of slavery. And that's her dream for our people. God has a dream for you and God will arrange the circumstances of your life. Now, I told you two things, but let me close by saying this. Remember what I've said, that God's dream is bigger than your dream. Two, you dream, God will orchestrate the circumstances. Then you ask the question, why don't I have it? Go back to Revelation chapter three, verse eight, one more time. And this is what it says. I know all things you do. I have opened a door for you. I have opened a door for you. What's the problem? If God has opened the door for you, Perhaps you don't have what God has for you because you don't have enough faith to walk through that door. If God has opened the door for you, walk through the door, quit tell, letting people convince you not to walk through the door because let me tell you something, if the door is open, that doesn't mean the door is gonna stay open. You have to walk through the door of opportunity that God's gonna give you. And when you walk through that door, God's gonna give you another door to walk through and God's gonna give you another door to walk through. But it all begins with conceptualization, looking beyond what is present in order to see what is possible. Amen. God has called you to be a champion. When you were born again, you were born to win. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for great dreams that you give us and that the dream you have for us is bigger than the dream we have for ourselves. Thank you for arranging circumstances so those dreams might come to pass and opening doors for us. Give us the faith to walk through that door. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with me. Another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, you need one. So I'd like to extend to you an invitation to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Contact us here at St. Stephen Church. New start at ssclive.org. God bless you. Thank you so very much for being with me. And don't forget, during COVID-19, which we still are in COVID-19, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is in control. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.